The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, sixth chapter, text number thirty through thirty four, given by his divine grace, A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in February of nineteen sixty nine in Los Angeles. The one who sees me everywhere, who sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. That's all. Hari Chandra, we lost our Krishna. Daddy, Sadasada Bhava Bhavi. So if you practice your life in this way and never lost to Krishna, so at the time of death, you are sure to go to Krishna, where is your name? You are not lost to Krishna. Kondya Pratijani hi nami bhakta pranasya. And Krishna promises, my dear Arjun, my pure devotee is never lost. So don't be lost to Krishna. That is perfect. That is perfect. Simply don't be lost to Krishna. You can uh, forget all things, but don't forget Krishna. Then you are richest. Uh, people may see you, may, you are very poor man, just like Goswamis. Uh, they adopted very poor life, mendicant. They were ministers, very opulent, very honorable gentlemen. Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, learned scholars, rich men, ministers, in every respect their social position so high. But they accepted these mendicants. Takva tuhu nammasi samandala patisane. That Goswami prayer you will find. Takva tuhu nammasi samandala patisane sada tu chavak. Just like most insignificant, they gave up everything. Bhutva dina gane sako karunaya kopina kantha sito. Kopina kantha sito, just one underwear and diamond cloth, that's all. They become accepted the poorest way of life. But uh, how they could live? If a very rich man accepts such uh, poor condition of life, he cannot live. We have seen it. If one is habituated to high standard of life, if you immediately lower his standard of life, he cannot live. But they lived very happily, ah, that is stated. Gopi bhavara samrita dilahari kallula magna unho bande rupa sanatana ragri go siji go. They were weakest by dipping themselves in the ocean of loving affairs of the gopi. So, if you simply think of the loving affairs of the gopis for Krishna, then you are not lost. There are so many ways. Don't be lost to Krishna. Then you are successful. Then Krishna will also not be lost and he will not be lost. Wrong. The person in Krishna consciousness Certainly sees Lord Krishna everywhere, and he sees everything in Krishna. Such a person may appear to see all separate manifestations of the material nature, but in each and every instance he is conscious of Krishna, knowing that everything is the manifestation of Krishna's energy. Yes. Now he, one who sees a tree, he is philosopher. Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness person is philosopher. If he studies, so what is this tree? Uh, he sees the tree is a material, then he has got a material body, just like I have got this material body, but he is a living entity. Due to his past misdeeds, he has got such abominable body that he cannot move him. But his body is material, and material means the material energy. And material energy, whose energy? Krishna's energy. Therefore the tree has got Krishna connection. 
and the three as living entities, part and parcel of Krishna. In that way, if you uh, discuss philosophy, Krishna consciousness, you see, don't see the tree, you see Krishna there. That is Krishna consciousness. You don't see tree, uh, you see Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. So you have to practice like that. That is yoga practice. That is Samadhi. Yes. Yeah. Nothing can exist without Krishna. And Krishna is the Lord of everything. This is the basic principle of Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the development of love of Krishna. A position transcendental even to material yes. liberation. This consciousness, this starting of the tree as Krishna's energy, as part and parcel of Krishna, why you take account of the tree so nicely? Because you have love of Krishna. Just like you love your child, and your child is away from your side, you find the shoes of your child. Ah, this is the shoe of my child. Do you love that shoe? No, you love that child. Similarly, as soon as see the energy of Krishna manifested in a different way, that means you love that uh, entity because you love Krishna. Therefore, if you love Krishna, then your universal love is counted, otherwise it is not. You cannot love. That is not possible. If you love Krishna, then the word love, universal love, has so many things as we very much advertise. And if you don't love Krishna, then you see, oh, here is my American brother, and the cow is my food. Because you do not love the cow. Oh. The cow is American, and my brother is American. My mother, by my brother is good, and the cow is food. This is my universal love. Why? By the Krishna conscious person, he sees, oh, here is a cow, here is a dog, with a part and parcel of Krishna. By somewhere or other, he has got a different body than me. But that does not mean. He is not my brother. So how can I kill my brother? That is Krishna's love, due to Krishna's love. The Krishna love is so nice. All perfection. If there is no Krishna love, there is no Krishna love. It is all nonsense. There cannot be any love without Krishna consciousness. It is the stage after self-realization at which the devotee becomes one with Krishna in the sense that Krishna becomes everything for the devotee and the devotee becomes full and loving Krishna. An intimate relationship between the Lord and the devotee then exists. In that stage there is no chance that the living entity will be annihilated. Nor is the personality of Godhead ever out of sight of the devotee. How can we become out of sight? He sees everything in Krishna and Krishna in everything. Everything in Krishna and Krishna in everything. Then how can he lose sight of Krishna? Yeah. To merge in Krishna is spiritual annihilation. A devotee takes no such risk. It is stated in the Brahma Sanhita, I worship the primeval Lord, Govinda, who is always seen by the devotee whose eyes are anointed with the Pope of Love. He is seen in his eternal form, Sam Sundar, situated within the heart of the devotee. Sam Sundar. This is Sam Sundar. The Kattamasa. Sam Sundar. Primanyana Srita Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadai Varidayesu Vilokaya. Yang Sam Sundaram Machinda Gunasta Rupam. 
Govindam Adipurisham Tamahangala. So one who has developed this love of Krishna, he, sa- he sees Samasunda, the Kattama side, always within his heart. That is perfection of Krishna. Kattamasa has been that name. Okay. He is Samasunda. All right, then next paragraph. At this stage, Lord Krishna never disappears from the sight of the devotee, nor does the devotee ever lose sight of the Lord. In the case of a yogi who sees the Lord as Paramatma, within the heart the same applies. Such a yogi turns into a pure devotee and cannot bear to live for a moment without seeing the Lord within himself. Yes, sir. So this is the process of seeing God. <laughs> Otherwise, God is not my order supplier. Please come and see. You have to love, you have to qualify yourself. You have to see God every, every moment, everywhere. And this thing, qualification is simple. That's not very good. Either. The yogi who knows that I am the yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one. In all circumstances. The part part is there. A yogi who is practicing meditation on the super soul within himself sees this plenary portion of Krishna as Vishnu, with four hands holding conch shell, wheel, club, and lotus flower. Is this picture, Vishnu picture, that is the objective of concentration for the yogi. That is real yoga. And this Vishnu manifestation a uh, Krishna's plenary portion. Uh, in the Brahma Sangita, it is said, Jak Karnana Vajali Bhajitisma Juga Nidra Mananta Jagadanda Saroma Kupa Sa Vishnu Mahansa Yajasa Kala Visesa. Govindamadipurisam tamahangayam. <coughs> I worship Govinda, the prime lord, Govindam Adipurisam. Purisam means the lord is man, enjoy. Adi, the original. Uh, <coughs> Govinda Madhi Purusam Tamaham Bhajami. And who is that Govinda? Now, whose only one plenary portion is Mahavishnu. And what is the function of Mahavishnu? Just say, Nishasita Kalam Athavalamra, Jeevanti Loma Bilaja Jagadanna Napa. In every universe, there is a uh, chief uh, living entity who is known as Brahma. Brahma is the original person in each universe. So, the life of Brahma or the life of an universe <coughs> is existing only on the breathing period of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is lying on the causal ocean, and while he is exhaling, millions of universes are coming as bubbles, and they are developing again. And when he is inhaling, millions of universes are going with him. So that is the position of this material world. It is coming out and again going. Bhutya Bhutya Praliyate. In the Bhagavad Gita also it is said that these material universes are being 
created at a certain period and again become annihilated. Now this creation and annihilation is depending on the exhaling and inhaling of Mahavishnu. Just imagine what is the uh, <coughs> caliber of that Mahavishnu. But that Mahavishnu is said here. Uh, just say Kanisha Sita Kalamathavalamma Jeevanti Loma Vilaja Jagadandanatha Vishnu Mahan Sahya Jasya Palavishesha this Mahavishnu is plenary portion of the plenary portion of Krishna. Krishna is the original. Govinda Mahadipur Santama. So, this Mahavishnu again enters into his universe as Garbhodok Sai Vishnu. And from Garbhodok Sai Vishnu, there is Thirodok Sai Vishnu. That Kirodoksai Vishnu is entering in, it, in the heart of every living entity. In this way, the Vishnu manifestation is all over the creation. Ah. So the yogi's concentration of mind on this Vishnu form, that is explained. That Vishnu, who is all pervading, who is Ishara Saru Bhutana Nidvesha Arjuna Pishtati. In the Bhagavad Gita you find that Maha Vishnu, that uh, Philosophic Science Vishnu is sitting in everyone's heart. Now Jogi has to find out where he is sitting and concentrate his mind there. That is the yoga process. Wow. The yogi should know wrong. The yogi should know that Vishnu is not different from Krishna. Krishna in this form of super soul is situated in everyone's heart. Furthermore, there is no difference between the innumerable super souls present in the innumerable hearts of living entities. Nor the, is there a difference. The example just like <coughs> There is one sun in the sky, but if you keep on the earth millions of water pot, you will find in each water pot the reflection of the sun. Or another example, at noon time you just inquire from your friend ten thousand miles away. Where is the sun? He will say, on my head. So, millions and trillions of people will see sun on his head. But the sun is one. And the another example, the water pot, the sun is one, but if there are millions of water pots, you will find each part the sun is reflected. Similarly, there may be innumerable living entities. There is no count. Jiva dhadankha. In the Vedic language, it is said that living entities, there is no count. In human. So similarly, Vishnu is, is a material thing like sun, can be reflected in each and every waterfall. So why not the Supreme Personality God of Vishnu lead? in each and every one's heart. It is not difficult to understand. Is this? That is there. And the yogi has to concentrate his mind on that Vishnu form. So, this Vishnu form is plenary portion of Krishna. So, one who is engaged in Krishna consciousness, he is already a perfect yogi. That will be explained. He, he is perfect joke that we'll explain in the last parts of this chapter. So. Nor is there a difference between a Krishna conscious person always engaged in the transcendental loving service of Krishna and the perfect yogi engaged in meditation on the super soul. There is no difference. 
a yogi who is in samadhi, trance, with the Vishnu form, and a Krishna conscious person, there is no difference. The yogi in Krishna consciousness, even though he may be engaged in various activities while in material existence, remains always situated in Krishna. A devotee of the Lord, always acting in Krishna consciousness, is automatically liberated. That we'll find in this Bhagavad Gita in the twelfth chapter. Uh, that uh, one which manta bhyadicharini bhakti yogena je sevate sagunan samati tayetan brahma bhuyaya kalpate it is said that man who is engaged in unalloyed devotion and service unto me uh, he has already transcended the material modes of nature a Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpat. He is on the Brahma platform. That means liberated. To become liberated means to be situated on the Brahma platform. There are three platforms. The bodily platform, a sensual platform, then mental platform, then spiritual platform. That spiritual platform is called Brahma platform. So, to become liberated means to stand on the Brahma platform. Uh, conditioned soul, uh, we are at the present moment, we are on the platform of this bodily concept of life or sensual planet. Those who are a little above, they are on the mental platform, speculating, philosophers. And above this platform, there is Brahma platform. So, you will find in the Bhagavad Gita 12th chapter, or 14th chapter, I think, that one who is in Krishna consciousness, he is already on the Brahma platform. That means liberty. So. In the Narada Pancharatra, this is confirmed in this way. By concentrating one's attention on the transcendental form of Krishna, who is all-pervading and beyond time and space, one becomes absorbed in thinking of Krishna, and then attains the happy state of transcendental association with Him. Krishna consciousness is the highest stage of trance in yoga practice. This very understanding that Krishna is present as Paramatma in everyone's heart makes the yogi faultless. The Vedas confirm this inconceivable potency of the Lord as follows. Vishnu is one, and yet he is certainly all pervading. By his inconceivable potency, in spite of his one form, he is present everywhere. As the sun, he appears as the sun, he appears in many places at once. Yeah. That example I have already given. As the sun can be present in many places simultaneous. Similarly, uh, Vishnu form or Krishna can be present in everyone's heart. He is actually present. Ishara Sarva Bhutanam Vidyasi or Jamis. Sitting the Localization is also stated. It is there. It is there in the, in the heart. So concentration of yoga means to find out from the heart where Vishnu is sitting. There is. Wrong. Verse 32. He is a perfect yogi who, knowing that the self dwells in all, he is the true equality of all living entities, both in their happiness and distress, O Arjuna. This is uh, universal vision. Uh, not that God is sitting uh, in your heart <coughs> and not in the cat's heart or dog's heart or cow's heart. He is sitting everyone's heart. It is said, Sarvahutana. Sarvahutana means all living entities. 
He is sitting in human heart. He is sitting in the ant's heart. He is sitting in the dog's heart. He is sitting in everyone's heart. But the cats and dogs, they cannot realize. That is the divine. But a human being, if he tries, if he follows the yoga system, Sankha yoga system, Bhakti yoga system, then he is able to find out. That is the prerogative of this human form of life. And if we miss this opportunity, if we don't find out, if we don't identify our existence with the law, then we are missing this opportunity. Uh, yes, after the evolutionary process, coming through eight uh, million four hundred thousand species of life, when we get this human form of life, if we miss this opportunity, uh, then how much uh, loss we suffer, we do not know. So we should be conscious about that. We should not miss this opportunity. We have got very nice body, human form of body, intelligence, and civilized life. We are not like animals. Uh, we can uh, think uh, peacefully. We have no so hard struggle for life as the animals. So how we should utilize? That is the uh, instruction in the Bhagavad Gita. Don't uh, lose this opportunity. Utilize the problem. Go on. Verse 33. Arjuna said, O Madhusudala, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to you, for the mind is restless and unsteady. Now, here is the uh, crucial test of yoga system. If you can concentrate your mind uh, on the form of Vishnu, the process has been described previously that you have to sit like this, you have to look like this, you have to live like this, so many things we have already discussed. But what Jun says that it is very difficult for me. We have to understand this point. He says, O oh, Madhusudana, uh, the system of yoga which you have summarized, this system is called Astanga Yoga. Astanga Yoga, eight uh, different uh, parts. Yam Niyam, uh, first of all, uh, controlling the senses, following the rules and regulations then practicing the sitting posture, then exercising uh, the breathing process, uh, then concentrate your mind, uh, then be absorbed in the form. There are eight processes, Ashtanga Yoga. So, Arjuna says, this Ashtanga Yoga system uh, is very difficult. Uh, he says that mm, impractical, appears not impractical for him. Uh, just uh, it is not impractical. If it is impractical, then Krishna would not have described and taken so much trouble. It is not impractical, but appears what one thing may be impractical for me, but practical for you. Oh, that is a different thing. But generally, this system is impractical. Uh, for ordinary common man. Arjuna is representing himself as a common man in the sense that he was not a, a mendicant or uh, he has renounced his family life or uh, he has no connection with his uh, bread problem because he was on the war field to fight for the kingdom. So he is supposed to be an ordinary. So for ordinary men who are engaged in this worldly activities, for handling livelihood, family life, children, wife, or so many problems, it is not practical. That is the point here. 
It is practical for one who has already renounced everything. Complete in a secluded, sacred place, just lying in the hill or in the cave of the hill, alone, uh, no public disturbance. So where is the opportunity for ordinary man, for us, especially in this age? Therefore this yoga system is not practical. It is admitted by Arjuna, who was a great warrior, and he was so advanced, he belonged to the royal family, and very expert in so many things. He said that it is impractical. Just try to understand. And what we are in comparison to Arjuna, if we try this system, oh, it's not possible. Failure is sure. One reading the third part. The system of mysticism described by Lord Krishna to Arjuna is here being rejected by Arjuna. Yes, rejected. Arjuna. Yes. Out of a feeling of inability, it is not possible for an ordinary man to leave home and go to a secluded place in the mountains or jungles to practice yoga in this age of power. The present age is characterized by bitter struggle for, for a life of short duration. Yes. First of all, our duration life is very short. If you study the statistics, uh, you can see your forefathers who live for hundred years or eighty years, ninety years now, uh, sixty years, seventy years, People are dying. Gradually, it will decrease. In this age, the memory, the duration of life, mercifulness, uh, so many things will decrease. That is the symptom of this age. Wow. People are not serious about self-realization, even by simple practical means. What to speak of this difficult yoga system? which regulates the mode of living, the manner of sitting, selection of place, a detachment of the mind from material engagement. As a practical man, Arjuna thought it was impossible to follow the system of yoga. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he was not prepared to become a pseudo yoga false, simply uh, by practicing some gymnastics. Uh, he was not a pretend. He said, that I am a family man, I am a soldier, no, so it is not possible for him. He frankly admits he does not catch something which is impossible. That is simply useless waste of time. Why should one do that? Well, Even though he was favorably endowed in many ways, he belonged to the royal family and was highly elevated in terms of numerous qualities. He was a great warrior. He had great longevity. Yes. One thing is the age. Five thousand years ago, when Arjuna was living, the longevity was very, very long. At that time, people used to live up to one thousand years. Ah. Just like in the present age, the limit is one hundred years. Similarly, in the Dapara Yuga, the age limit was one thousand years. And before that, uh, in the Teta Yuga, the age limit was ten thousand years. And before that, in the Sattva Yuga, the age limit was one hundred thousand years. So the age limit is decreasing. So even though Arjuna was at a time when people could live for one thousand of years, he still he, he thought that it is impossible. Wow. And above all, he was the most intimate friend of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Five thousand years ago, Arjuna had much better facilities than he did. Yet he refused this system of yoga. This system of yoga. This Astanga Yes. In fact, 
We do not find any record in history of his practicing it at any time. Therefore, this system must be considered impossible, especially in this age of college. Of course, it may be possible for some very few rare men, but for the people in general, it is an impossible proposal. If this was so 5,000 years ago, then what to speak of the present day? Those who are imitating this yoga system in different so-called schools and societies, although complacent, are certainly wasting their time. They are completely ignorant of the desired goal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, this uh, Ashtanga Yoga is not possible. Therefore, this Yoga system, Bhakti Yoga system, uh, is uh, applicable to anyone. You have seen when this chanting Bhakti Yoga system goes on, even a small child, uh, he also begins to play. Without any training, without any education, automatically he takes one. Uh, so, therefore Lord Chaitanya has said, that this is the only system in this age. Harin Nama, Harin Nama, Harin Nama, Iva Kivala. Simply chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Kalo, in this age of Kali. Kalo, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva. There is no other alternative. No other alternative. No other alternative. If you adopt this system, this Bhakti Yoga system, very simple, simply chant. In fine, immediately, Pratyakham avagavam dhamma. Any other yoga system, if you practice, you are in the darkness, you do not know how far you are making progress. But this system, you will understand, yes, I am making such and such progress. So this is the only yoga system, bhakti yoga system, that one can practice for quick result and uh, self-realization and liberation even in this life. Uh, he hasn't got to wait for another life. It is so nice. Krishna Kaha. Verse 34. For the mind is reptile, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, it seems to me, more difficult than controlling the wind. Yes. Even if you can control the wind, that is not possible. So nobody can control the wind. But uh, even it is theoretically accepting that you can control the wind, but it is not possible to control the mind. It is very difficult. Mind is so flickering and so turbulent. Wow. Mind is so strong and obstinate that sometimes it overcomes the intelligence. For a man in the practical world who has to fight so many opposing elements, it is certainly very difficult to control the mind. Artificially, one may establish a mental equilibrium toward both friend and enemy. But ultimately, no worldly man can do so. For this is more difficult than controlling the raging wind. In the Vedic literature, it is said, the individual is the passenger in the car of the material body, and intelligence is the driver. Mind is the driving instrument, and the senses are the horses. The self is thus the enjoyer or sufferer in the association of the mind and senses. So it is understood by great thinkers. Intelligence is supposed to direct the mind, but the mind is so strong and obstinate that it surpasses even one's own intelligence. As an acute infection may surpass the, the efficacy of medicine, 
Such a strong mind is supposed to be controlled by the practice of yoga. But such practice is never practical for a worldly person like Arjuna. And what can we say of modern man? The difficulty is neatly expressed. One cannot capture the blowing wind. And it is even more difficult to capture the agitated mind. That for this process, chanting Hare Krishna, uh, he captures the mind immediately. Simply, if you chant Krishna, uh, and if you hear, automatically your mind is fixed up in Krishna. So that means the yoga system is immediately attained. Because the whole yoga system is to concentrate your mind on the form of Vishnu. And Krishna is the original personality of expansion of Vishnu form. Krishna is just like here is a lamp. Now from this lamp, from this candle, you can bring another candle. You can kindle it. Then another, 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 thousands of candles you can expand. Each candle is uh, as powerful as this candle. There is no doubt about it. But one has to take this candle as the original candle. Similarly, Krishna is expanding in millions of Vishnu forms. Each Vishnu form is as good as Krishna. But Krishna is the original candle. Because from Krishna everything expands. So one who has concentrated his mind, Somewhere rather in Krishna, he has already attained the perfection of yoga. This is the uh, substance of Krishna consciousness movement. 